Hi everybody, this is Kate Quinn from Fabricated Quilts and I wanted to address really quickly a couple of special free motion features and some different questions that people often have when we're doing free motion. So I do teach ruler work and people sometimes don't realize that ruler work is a free motion skill. So we're going to just talk about the setup and physically what that looks like on your quilt and how to get everything that you need so you can be ready. So when I put my ruler foot on, my machine has a few settings that um, are appropriate for ruler work. It has medium and light. So what that means is the height of the foot can be higher or lower. So I'll just press the button and let's show you some of the difference between what that can look like. So that's one setting. That's the light setting and that's the height of the foot. And if I press that button that says medium, you'll see that the foot raises up a little bit. Okay, so when you're setting up your foot, it's really important that you have the right setting. So I'm going to actually put mine on medium and I'm actually going to raise it up even more than that. The medium setting for my machine is 2.5 and I'm going to see if I can just make it a bigger gap. So you won't be able to see it until we start sewing, but I'm going to make it a gap of 3.5. Okay, so when I start sewing, I'll just sew over here on the edge. See how much space there is right under there as the foot isn't really compressing. It's not coming down. And look at how the fabric is kind of waving at you. I call that flagging. But see how it's moving up and down? You can actually see that vibration that's happening. And let's see if we, we can make it even bigger. I'll go up a little bit more. So that's four. So you can see it's really high, just to really exaggerate. See how that's flagging? See how the fabric is really just bumping up and down? So what happens is that the needle picks up the whole sandwich, and then when it hits the foot as it's up higher, then the foot knocks it off. So this is the number one reason for having skipped stitches or for having um, shredding. And that's because the thread itself, it kind of builds up that slack as the foot is kicking the fabric off, then that it's gathering up some slack in the needle. So it might not right away uh, be a problem, but pretty soon it's gonna be a problem. You know, it, it, uh, is not going to give you as good of a stitch, you're going to find that it's just going to not be as pretty. So let's go ahead and I'm going to cut this because I want to show you something else really quick. If I cut my thread with a scissor button, which I just did, you can see that it cuts the thread off, which is nice. But let me show you underneath. The bobbin is basically invisible. It's nearly impossible to pick up that bobbin thread. So if I'm quilting and I wanna have all my bobbin up on the top and then I'm trying to pick up that thread, it's pretty hard to do it, right? We'll try it one more time. You have to be super careful and he's barely able to be picked up. So one of my recommendations is that when you're using a machine that has a scissor button, and you're free motioning or doing ruler work, I don't recommend using the scissors because I want to control this tail. So I want to make sure that I'm pulling it up to the top and knowing where it is at all times. So we said that our foot was too high. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to readjust. And my foot now is kissing my fabric. It's not preventing me from moving at all. I can move wherever I want to, but it's pretty close to the foot. If my foot were low, too low, so let's show you that. So let's make this go really low. So I don't know if you can see, but see how it makes the little snow plow out in front right here as it's going? That means that the fabric is going to be having that little travel like this wherever you go. So the slack in front of your foot is going to build up sometimes and that can create a pucker in addition if this is so low that you're having to push and pull the whole time you're going to fatigue out really fast i know i would 
So the rule is you want it so that it is high enough that you can move without any problem, move your sandwich without any problem. So maybe I'll just bring mine up a couple of notches. Now, you have different ways to do this. I'm pressing my presser foot pressure button, which will raise and lower the presser foot, and a lot of machines have that. If you don't have that, on your machine, you should have a screw that's on your uh, foot shaft bar. And if you're using a Wesley foot, you will have the ability to adjust your foot. You can raise it or lower it in order to get this precise alignment with the foot kissing. Okay, so this is the number one step, getting your foot adjusted to the right height. Another option that we offer is our gliders. So let me grab mine. So this is our grid glider. It comes in a tube. I keep the tube for protection to keep it nice and uh, neat. So let's move this out of here real fast. The grid glider is pretty cost effective as gliders go. It has a peel and stick backing like this. That protects it, so I'll just pull that off. And it has a nice big opening, a really big opening. This bold line with the dashes like that, it's lined up with the number six. That can line up right with the center needle position. So let's see where our center needle position is. Dun, 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 right there and right there. Okay. So I'll get that all lined up. And I just flatten it like this. And it should stick pretty well. You can see it's not going to go anywhere if I push on it. It's not sliding around. It's not going anywhere. Now mine is clean, um, it's been washed recently, and that means that it'll stick really well. If it's linty, it doesn't stick as well, and that's com a common problem with most products like this, so you wanna make sure that you're keeping it clean. And what I recommend regarding that would be if you've used it all day and you know you're gonna be quilting the next day and you wanna make sure it's gonna stick well, rinse it that night, and then in the morning it's dry. So you don't have to worry about it it takes a, that little bit of planning ahead to make sure that it's ready for you to use. One other thing that's very, very cool is I just want to show you real quick. I'm going to just raise my foot up and I want you to see how easily the fabric is moving. Okay, so if I don't have this on, my fabric can't move quite as smoothly. And that's really important when I'm trying to hold this and make sure that everybody's moving together. If the fabric is resisting, then I have to hold much harder with my, with my hand if I'm keeping everything together. But if this is doing a lot of the work of decreasing any resistance, then I don't have to push as hard because everybody will just go with me. I mean, and literally, you can see the ruler will stay in place and I can just move with one finger. And that's really a big benefit to having a glider. The other great feature about our grid glider is now, if I wanted to use some lines here for sewing, I could. For example, I like to do my binding at 3 8 So there's a little mark. Let's see which line it is. This line right here. Let's see if we can get you in there to see it, where my finger is, this little dotted line. That's the 3 8 inch mark. That's the quarter inch mark. That's the center needle position mark right there. So having those lines can be super useful. And then it also has sort of what I call the zero center line. So it goes right in the middle, zero. Then these are both marked as one. These are marked as two. So if for any reason I really needed to have my, something centered where I wanted to sew right down the middle of something, well then I could easily match up the two sides edges right here and just keep it right in between those marks and it would sew right in the center. The other great feature about the grid glider is I don't have to take this off if I want to switch between sewing and quilting. Right away all I have to do is raise my feed dogs and change my stitch and I'm ready to go. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to take this off. 
for both of our gliders, I want to show you really quickly what I recommend if you need to change your bobbin. Never, ever, 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 ever take your foot off before you are taking your glider off. The foot right there is protecting this needle and it makes sure that this won't go up inside of the needle area and cut your glider. Because this glider right here has this opening, it's a little bit weaker right in this cutout than it would be if it was all solid. So you don't wanna just pull it up like this. I see people, they do this. Don't do that, okay? If you need to take your glider off, take the one end and roll it gently under the foot like that. Just leave it like that. You could then adjust your bobbin, right? Whatever you need to do with your bobbin. And then you're just gonna gently, gently, gently get that under there and roll it back. And I would pull this thread out like that. Okay, and then once you've finished checking your bobbin and getting everything set, then you can go ahead and pull your bobbin threads. Okay, and then you're ready to sew. Everything's all in good shape. One of the other care and uh, cleaning items that I recommend for this particular item is our table polish. So people kind of are weirded out by that. They're like, well, it's not a, it's not a table. Why do I have to polish it? This is going to come to you pre-polished. And just like any surface, it might get sticky, it might get fingerprinty, you know, the oils from your fingers or adhesives from different quilting projects, um, maybe you spilled a little coffee or you had a sticky finger or whatever. Well, over time, this may no longer be quite as smooth as it is right at this moment. So our table polish is amazing, totally amazing. So this is what our polish kit looks like. It's just a tube and it's kind of a thick paste, a liquidy paste. So what you would do is just put a little bit on there doesn't take a lot. And you're just going to buff it into little circles. Okay, just like this. This can be used on any of our acrylic tables, any acrylic tables, especially the smooth ones. Also, machines that have an acrylic surface. Um, that's shiny, like some of the baby lock ones, some of the brother ones. So we'll just polish it in little circles, get it all dry. All right, and I'm just going to grab a little piece of fabric real quick. I'll stick it right on there and just watch this. Crazy. We'll do it again. So you can see it works really well. So what you'll want to do is just over time as you get um, little nicks or fingerprints or sticky stuff on your table, that is going to help fill in all those little micro scratches and it's going to make sure that this surface is going to be amazingly smooth. All right, so let's do a couple of other things. We've got our glider on, we've adjusted our foot height so that we have the correct height. So let's see, right there, there we go. Our feed dogs are down. Let's talk about that. Feed dogs down. Can you do feed dogs up with free motion, with ruler work? Yes, you can. Nothing's going to prevent you except yourself, but the feed dogs are designed to walk your fabric that way towards the back of your machine. If I wanna go this way, are they working with me or against me? They're working against me. And if I'm trying to pull it this way, they're definitely working against me, direct opposite forces. Also, if you have a glider that does not have this big cutout and you put it over your feed dogs, but they're up, they're not doing anything anyway, because they're covered. In addition to that, they will damage a glider if your glider is covered and they're up, it'll actually bite into them with every stitch that it takes. So I really recommend using the feed dogs down. I do think it's more practical. So let's address the question of stitch length. If I'm doing free motion, what is my stitch length? 
Is it one? Is it one and a half? Is it two? It's nothing. You are controlling it. Your machine has no control over it. So it doesn't matter what number you set. What matters is how you sew. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to pick up our thread, our bobbin, because we always want that on the top. So we'll pick that up. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is our stitch adjustment for tension. So when you're starting, I like to start with the needle in the down position. The very first thing I want you to do, once you've got your foot height adjusted, your feed dogs are down, and your glider is on, I want you to sew some little circles. Doesn't matter what direction you go, just sew some little circles. After you've sewn the circles, I want you to do this test. I want you to sew a V like this. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to bring up your bobbin thread if you're sewing and you're done. If I was done and I wanted to finish and tack off my stitches, I'm gonna sew five or six stitches right in the same stitch line coming back towards me. Can go any direction in your existing stitch line, but you're gonna sew over it. You have to move, okay? I can't sew six stitches right on top of each other and expect that there won't be a knot. So I, I have both of them. I, I did both and I'll show you what the two different ones look like. So I'm gonna bring my needle up first, my foot up second, and I'm gonna pull my thread away and my sandwich. So my bobbin now is this long, even though you can't see it. So we'll get everybody lined back up. Put your needle down and up and release your presser foot. Right there is my bobbin thread. You can see it's a vastly different color. And notice, this is the loop that I was holding right here. I have to pull in between that so that I can get on either side to pull that bobbin thread up. Okay, so I'll just clip the bobbin thread so it's released and I can actually just clip this one as well. This is the top thread right here. So we'll just cut him, get him out of our way. Now, I've cut the bobbin, so I got two sides. One side is connected to the bobbin, you can see, and this is connected to the quilt. This bobbin thread, it can just go away underneath there, right? So there it is. And then this one connected to the quilt top would be the one that you could cut. So let's bring this up a little bit close to you. Let's see if we can put some light on it, better light. Okay, so here were the stitches where I moved. One, two, three, four, five. And then this is where I took five or six stitches right in the same exact place and I didn't move. And notice how that is the knot. Even though it's small, it's highly visible compared to this where you're stitching slowly and moving. So you wanna do that. You wanna move when you're tack stitching. You don't wanna stay in the same place. Now, this is blue thread on top, right? And it looks pretty good. I don't see any of my bobbin thread really. So let's see what's happening on the back. Let's put some more light on this for us so we can look at it. All right, so let me show you right here, up really close. So I don't know if you can see it. Let's look at this yellow right here. Notice how this blue thread, which is the top thread, is showing on the bottom. This tells me that the top thread is being lazy. He's hanging out on the bottom trying to make friends and he's just making the sewer angry. So if you can see your top thread on the bottom, that means the top is not working hard enough. That means that you would want to raise the number so that your top thread is working harder. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to raise my top thread and mine is four point something and I'm going to put it up actually quite a bit. I'm going to bring it up to about 5.6. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and mark these. This was 4.6 right here. 
and the same for this whole little area. Okay, so now we got 5.6, and we'll do the same test. Okay, same thing. You're going to pick up your bobbin thread so he's on the top. You always want the bobbin thread on the top. Oh, he's long. There we go. Start with your needle down, and you're going to sew those little circles. Now we'll do the V's again. Okay. So let me cut these threads, get those out of our way. Okay, so we'll cut that bobbin thread, get everybody off. Now let's flip it and see what we have. Okay, so let's see. We want to look at that yellow. Let's see if we can get you some more light on there. There we go. So it's much, much improved. So right there, I actually see very little of the top thread. Let's see where we were before. This is where we were before. Right there, see how much of that we could see? And now, there, we can't see very much. Although, I would say that even now, I can raise that up. I think we could raise up our tension even more. So I'll go ahead and I'll raise it up a little bit more. We'll put it up to about 6.2. All right, so let's try it again. We'll do 6.2 tension. Now, yours may not have a number. It may just have a dial for tension. You know, it, it might have a number, but it just might say, you know, higher tension, something like that. That's okay. You don't need a number. You just need a reference. You need to be able to know if you're making it tighter or if you're making it looser. Okay, so needle down. Hello. Okay, so we'll do the same thing. Loop-de-loops. Why loop-de-loops? Why are they important? When we make a circle, we are changing speed more dramatically than we are most other times. Because we have to constantly change the orientation of it to make a circle. So if we are doing that, that's when you're going to see the eyelashes. Why the little Vs? If we have bad tension right at the points, that's where it's going to drag your bobbin thread. And so you'll see a bobbin, you know, color change at the points. So that's why I like this particular test. I find it useful. So I'm going to be lazy and just cut this real quick. All right. So let's see. Ooh, I like it. I think it's looking pretty good. Okay. Let's see if you can see right there. See that? That looks pretty good to me. There is a little dot, so maybe we can make it just a little tighter. But that is the challenge that you have when you have vastly different colors. So you can see over here, you can't even really see anything. But maybe the yellow, because the color differential is so high, you might end up with a little dottiness. And this is always the challenge that you have when using variegated thread. So you know, you have to play around with the tension a little bit more to get that perfect look with a variegated thread. And then one of the things you can also do with a variegated thread is use a lighter weight bobbin that hides more easily. Or you can also use double batting because double batting gives more space for the knot to be hidden in there. So they, the knot between the two, if you have, you know, this much batting or that much batting, you got a lot more room for that knot to be hiding in there. All right, so let's go ahead. We'll bring it up just a little bit more. We'll go ahead and we'll mark so everybody can know what we're doing. It says 6.8 right now. All right. All right, same thing, little circles. these 
off. Okay. And let's see what we have. Looks pretty good to me. I think I would be very happy with that as it's sewing. It's a nice tight stitch. There's no looseness in it. Looks really good on the top as well. So that's where I'm at. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use this area and I'm gonna make the top thread really high. Like on mine, maybe eight, 8.2. So let's see what happens. So now the top is going to be super tight. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if I have my presser foot down and I pull this thread, woo, notice he can barely move, barely, without a lot of pressure. One of the risks for having that top tension too tight is you can break that top thread more easily because he's got so much pressure. But let's see, let's see what happens. So I'm not sewing as fast because I know he's under pressure a lot. All right, well, you can just barely see it, but let me see if I can show you what's happening with this now. Okay, so we'll needle up, go up. So I'm going to bring it up to you, and I don't know if you can see, just barely, but right there, see that orange right there? That's because now the top thread is so tight and so cinchy that he is pulling up. So I can see right in there the yellow, and right in there I can see the orange. And let's show you the V too. See at the top of the V right there where it's dragging the bobbin now? It's pulling up so hard that right at that corner where it's changing directions, you're getting that orange thread. And you can just barely see it, but right along there, you can see the orange right in there. So that's telling you that if your top thread is too tight, so let's turn that over and show you what that looks like, especially right here. So notice that I, I don't see any of the blue thread right there at all none right there either right but it still is a little bit too tight because i can see now this blue thread is pulling all these colors up on the top just barely but enough so that would tell me that i would want to lower my top tension okay so that's the tension lesson for today now i'm going to tell you a couple of things about controlling for speed so you can get a beautiful stitch. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll get this bobbin thread up. Okay, now I'm gonna turn the speed on my machine all the way up to the top and I'm going to press the gas all the way down to the bottom, ready? Oh my gosh, my anxiety level is super high. Now, look how, how tight those little stitches are. Can you see how tiny they are? They're pretty small. They're not evil, but I wouldn't want to rip those out, I'll tell you that. That would be not, not too fun. Okay, so let's put our machine at half speed, and let's see, does that decrease my anxiety level? Okay, so we'll just scoot over a tiny bit. Now remember, I want you to sew at full speed when you do this, right? So I'm, I'm gonna move just like I was piecing, keeping my fabric even. I'm not gonna try to keep up with my machine. I'm gonna make it do its work, but I'm gonna sew at a nice regulated speed. Okay, so let's turn it now. Well, I think that looks quite a bit better you know, than it did. That's still going to be a lot prettier and a lot nicer looking stitch than this crazy one over here, right? 
Now, let's slow it down to the slowest level. And I'm going to move the same. Okay, I'm going to try to move the fabric the same, but I'm going to make it be at the slow speed on the machine. So this is even hard to move that slowly. I mean, I literally can't. I would want to move it so much more because it's even hard for me to just wait for it to have the needle come up. It's annoying, actually. Okay, so look what's happening, right? See how gigantic those stitches are? Let's see if we can get in there and really get a good look at how big they are. They are so big, right? And that's because this machine is not matching me. So before you look at any stitches, this is what I want you to do. I want you to like close your eyes. Not really, I do want you to make sure your fingers are safe. But I want you to let your machine drive you by sound. Okay, so I'm gonna raise mine up and I'm gonna sew and I'm pressing my gas all the way. This does not sound good to me. So I'm gonna raise it up a little bit more. That still is slower than I would sew. I don't like that, that doesn't sound good. Uh, maybe just a tiny bit faster. So right there, I uh, still need it a little faster for me. Okay, so right there, that's where I feel like I could piece, I could move stuff, I could control, and I could sew. Okay, maybe I could even go a little faster. That's a little bit slow for me, so we'll go just a tiny bit faster. Okay, so I'm not worried now about what does my stitch look like. All I'm doing is listening to the sound of my machine. If you have sewn for any length of time, five years, two years, 10 years, 16 years, you know what your machine should sound like because you've already sewn probably a million stitches, if not more. So make it sound comfortable to you. Make it sound like the machine lullaby so that you have no anxiety as you're sewing, that you don't feel like you have to race it or you can't control it or it's out of, out of control and it's creating anxiety. Just let it sew at the speed you're comfortable with already in your brain, in your mind. And if you do that, your stitches are going to look good. They're going to have a nice, even appearance, right? The key is that if you're comfortable and you're relaxed and that sound is not driving you crazy, your body is going to revert to its natural process and to the speed that you already know. So what I don't want to see is people who put their machine up really high and then they're like, oh my God, I, I got to keep up with it. Oh, where do I go next? Oh, oh shoot. This, uh, oh, the stitches are so tiny. What do I do now? Okay. That means that, that you're letting the machine be in control. You're not in control. Okay. You're in charge. The key is once you find that sound, the sound that you like that works for you, then you have to press the gas all the way, okay? And by pressing the gas on your machine all the way, you're eliminating any variable in that speed and you're allowing the machine to do what you're telling it, okay? Alrighty. So we'll just do this cute little design right here. We'll just fill this in. One of the things I love about my ruler foot is it is perfectly a quarter inch. So if I ever want to do any little echoes, it's perfect for doing echoes. Okay, so there is a cute little design and you can see that the stitch length looks pretty good. And that's a speed that I'm comfortable with. So every person is going to have their own speed. They're going to have their own comfort zone. And you'll hear lots of people, you know, say different things like, you know, reverse your foot around and that can work. You know, there's lots of different ways that you can make that adjustment. But for me, really the key is that if you have sewn and you've pieced, you need to listen to your machine and let that be the guide for the speed that you want to sew at. And then as you get more comfortable with free motion, if you see that your stitches are long, so let me show you if your stitches are long, right? Then that means I would need to, to speed the machine up. And if my stitches are super tiny, super tiny, tiny, and they're like close tight together, 
then you need the machine to go slower. Those are your two rules of thumb. You'll see that as you get more experienced and you're able to move the fabric more easily and more comfortably, that you may find that your perfect speed may change. So remember, you're the driver and you're in control.